Hello, my name is Thomas Taylor and I am the author of Gargantis, which is the sequel to Malamander. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Gargantis today and how I came to write it. Now in Malamander, we discovered Herbie Lemon and his friend Violet Palmer, who um, lives at the Grand Nautilus Hotel in Erie on Sea. Now we come back to Erie on Sea for Gargantis. This time, a terrible storm is attacking the town, a storm out of legend, a storm in which there might be something a little more monstrous going on than than you'd expect from, from bad weather. And it's Herbie and Violet's job to try and work out what's going on, especially when a very mysterious stranger comes to stay in the hotel and begins to doing some very, start doing some very odd things, especially with the fishermen in Erie on the Sea, who start to become quite mysterious in their own right. And then during all this, while all this is going on, something incredible washes up on the beach. A glass, ancient fish-shaped bottle with something flickering inside it and no one knows what to do with this bottle but Herbie Lemon is entrusted with its its care and it's his job to try and find out what should be done with the bottle and of course it doesn't take long before Violet persuades him to open the bottle and let what's inside come out and that's when all sorts of adventures begin. Now I was inspired to write this story partly by living in a seaside town and being there all year round and seeing the terrible weather in the winter and watching the storms that come in um, over the sea in the winter and how amazing and magnificent they are. And you get the sense when you look up into these storms that there's something up there in the clouds. There isn't, of course, I'm sure, but it almost feels like there is something big, something moving around, something that makes all that sound, all that noise. And to see the little boats bobbing around and see how small and fragile they are beneath that great cloud and great storm is really inspirational and exciting. And I, I really wanted to make that the backdrop of my story. And now I'm going to read chapter one from Gargantis. Chapter one, Deep Hood. If there's one thing hotels have a lot of, it's strangers. Hotels are kind of in the stranger business after all. But no hotel in the world puts the strange in stranger quite like the Grand Nautilus Hotel. Take this guy, for example, the one who's just come in from the storm, the one walking across the empty marble floor of the lobby. See him? The one whose face is hidden by the enormous hood of a long wax coat streaming with rainwater. He doesn't even pull his hood back to talk to the receptionist and his luggage, a metal bound wooden box clutched in one gloved hand, doesn't leave his side for a moment. Who is he? What's his story? What's in the box? Of course we'll probably never know and that's fine. People are entitled to their privacy. Privacy is something else hotels have a lot of. Besides, there's something sinister about this man, something threatening that makes me not want to know, to be honest. I'll be quite happy once he's up in his room doing whatever dark and secret things he's come here to do, far away from me. He takes his key and steps away from the reception desk and starts walking in my direction. I sit up and adjust my cap. May I help you, sir, I say, as the man in the overlong coat stops before the desk of my little cubbyhole. I look up and see nothing but darkness in that drooping hood. My cap starts to slip down the back of my head, so I straighten it. Herbert Lemon, a voice comes from inside the hood, and I flinch. There's an unnatural edge to that voice that makes my skin crawl. That's right, sir, I reply. I'm Herbie Lemon, lost and founder at the Grand Nautilus Hotel, at your service. Have you lost something? There's a sudden kaka boom as a clap of thunder gallops around the town outside. The flash of lightning that rides with it only serves to highlight the darkness in the man's hood. The wind flings rain against the window panes and the hotel lamps flicker. The man remains motionless, dripping rainwater on my counter. Uh, umbrella, perhaps, I suggest. A glance at the metal-bound box in the man's hand. There's barely enough room for a change of underpants in a thing like that. Or luggage, maybe? My voice is almost a squeak now. The man leans in, his hood nearly closing over my head. My nostrils fill with the stink of wet coat and fishy breath. Do not ask what I have lost, Herbert Lemon, comes the man's voice, sounding as if each word is made with a great deal of effort. Ask what I have found. And that's when there's another crash of thunder and the hotel's lights go out. Now I know what you're thinking. Yes, you, sitting there, safe at home, staring into your book with big bug eyes, waiting for something horrible to happen to me. You're thinking that I'm going to freak out about now, and I admit I am considering it. But you don't get to be lost and founder at the Grand Nautilus Hotel without learning how to be a professional. 
So, okay, yes, maybe I'm not the bravest mouse in the basket, but I am in my place, behind my polished desk, master of my own little world of lost property and shiny buttons. And that's why, when the lights come back on, I'm still sitting exactly where I was, clutching my lost and founders cap with both hands and blinking at empty space. Because, of course, the man with the deep hood has gone. Well, since I began writing my Eerie on Sea books, um, I've been collecting quite a few things which I keep in my cabinet of Eerie on Sea, which I have here behind me. Um, many things I find when I'm out beachcombing, some things which I've made or have been made for me. And I thought it might be fun just to go through some of those things and uh, explain what they are. And also to show you a little bit of what I do when I go in to visit schools and talk to children in schools. So to start with, um, for example, I have a lot of this stuff. I'm sure you can probably guess what that is at home. But if you can't, I'll tell you, this is sea glass. This is glass that's formed from um, broken bottles from many years ago, rolled in the tide year after year until it becomes these glass pebbles. And as you can see, they're very beautiful. Probably can't see so well in this light. Um, but that's what that is. It's a pebble of glass. But you know, there's a legend they tell about sea glass. They say it's not glass at all, but the petrified tears of mermaids. I think is rather a special story and you wonder why, how did that happen, what was the mermaid weeping about and how did the tears become frozen. Um, something else I collect are these. Can you see what those are? I'm sure you can guess. These are shells. Shells of a creature called the saddle oyster. A very humble creature, doesn't live very long and it leaves these um, shells on the beach a little bit like um, some natural rubbish, if you like, a little bit like the broken bottle, but this is the byproduct of a small creature. But when I find them, do you see they're slightly pearlescent and beautiful? Uh, I think, what could these be in a story? What could these be if I was writing a story about them? And I think that these are the scales of a sea monster, maybe even the scales of a malamander. Uh, what else have we got now? This here is quite special. I made this myself. This is a Jenny Hanover. Now, if you're not too sure what that is, if you're feeling brave enough, you could type Jenny Hanover into Google, look at Google Images, and you'll see some monsters. <laughs> and you can actually buy them. They're antique monsters. They are, well, you'll find out what they are when you, when you have a look. But um, rather than try and buy one, I've made my own. But years ago, sailors would go out to sea and they would catch a skate or a ray, it's a kind of fish, and they would cut up the skate or ray in a certain way and dry it in the sun. And as it dried, it kind of shriveled up and became this horrible little kind of mer creature, um, which they would bring back to land and then sell to gullible people and say, look, a real sea monster. And I've always been quite fascinated by them, uh, but I don't really want to own a real one because they're quite gruesome. So I've made this paper one of my own, made of paper and nightmares. Um, but I took the name Jenny Hanover and used it in my book, as you'll know if you've read Malamanda. And of course, the Jenny Hanover in the book is a lot nicer than this looks. Now, something else um, I often find, well, sometimes find, it's quite rare, is this. And this is a special kind of sea glass. This is all I have is in this bottle. I don't have very much of this. Special kind of sea glass because it's made from uranium salt. So that's right, you've heard correctly. This sea glass is slightly radioactive. And when I apply this light, you probably know what the kind of light that is. That's a UV light to this um, sea glass. You'll see something extraordinary happens. Ready? If you can see, I'm not sure you can see that well. It glows in a kind of magical and strange way. And hopefully you can see how finding something on the beach that glows like this is very inspirational if you're writing a story about a magical egg that grants wishes. Now what else have I got? Oh, I've got some, um, some sherbet lemons, but not many of those left, unfortunately. You'll know why I have sherbet lemons if you've thought for a moment about why uh, Herbie is called Herbert Lemon. Talking of Herbie, look at this. An artist I know has made me a model of Herbert Lemon. Isn't he amazing? He's even got a map of Erie on the Sea. He's really great. I sometimes take him into schools, but he's quite fragile. I love his hair, his quiff. And you can see he's got the Lost and Founders cap on top. He's really great, I like him. And talking of Lost and Founders caps, 
lastly, I wanted to show you this, a genuine Lost and Founders cap, which I could almost put on. I won't put it on though, of course. I'll go on then. No, it doesn't really fit me. My Lost and Founder days are over, I think. But this is a perfect cap. I take this into schools and um, the children have a lot of fun putting it on and doing a Lost and Founder uh, tasks, and it's great fun. And uh, I think that's just about it. My Lost and Founder Erion C cabinet. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy visiting it. <laughs>